when you think 5-2, you think that's probably over two legs. 5-2. Nope, that's just one game. That just typifies and summarises the Champions League this season. It's just been absolutely incredible. I'm so, so, so happy I'm able to watch these games and, and review them. And thank you to you guys for supporting the channel and making this possible because I love football. I love talking about football. And today's match, it's just one of those games where as soon as it ends, I'm like, yes, OK, I cannot wait to record my thoughts. So you Liverpool fans, I'm sure a lot of you will be, of course, extremely happy scoring five goals, Champions League semi-final against a very strong Roma side. But I'm sure there'll also be a couple of disappointed reactions because of the last, you know, the, the last moments of the game where you've conceded two very avoidable goals, pretty much. They, they practically gave Roma two goals, which is a lifeline. It really is. This tie is not over yet. At 5-0, it was over. Um, but because it's Roma and because, you know, they beat Barca 3-0 to turn it around, there's no doubt in mind that they can do it against Liverpool as well. You know, it's, it's not over yet. It really isn't. And uh, I wanted to pull up the stats, actually, because it was absolutely mental. You think that Liverpool dominated the game. Yeah, I, I would say they did. But if you think about possession stats, you'd expect to see maybe 60, 65 percent for the team that really dominated. Nope. Roma had actually more possession than Liverpool today, 51 to 49 percent, which obviously isn't much difference. But that showed that the, the score doesn't tell the whole story. It, it probably does... I think it, it flatters Roma a little bit, the fact that they've got those two away goals. But Liverpool blew them away in that first half and the beginning of the second half. But they didn't actually dominate the possession. I mean, they've had more shots, 21 shots to 14, 11 of them on target compared to six for Roma. And of course, Roma did get, get the penalty as well, which you know doesn't really help the statistics really speak of the result. Uh, corners, seven to four, Liverpool getting seven and a lot more fouls as well. Um, Liverpool conceded 13 fouls tonight. That's, that seems quite high to me. But I think that's just because of the way Liverpool play. Very aggressive. They like to, to really run at the players and, and put pressure on them, get tackles in nice and early. Just don't let them breathe. And that worked very well against Roma tonight. I mean, Klopp's plan was perfect. And with, with Salah in the team, you just, you never know. Salah is, he's that good right now. I think he's on par with Messi and Ronaldo right now. He really is. If not, you could argue he's actually playing better than them right now. Um, Ronaldo, we've seen in the Premier League, he was very successful. Messi, we haven't seen in the Premier League. But Salah, he's come back to the Premier League and he has taken it by storm. He's he's unbelievable player. I think they should have a permanent drug tester following him around during the day. He's clearly on drugs, right? <laughs> he's that good. Obviously, he's not. He's just absolutely unbelievable. But... It, it sometimes makes you feel like, what, what, why? How is he all of a sudden so good? Where was this Salah at Chelsea and at Roma? He did okay at Roma, but not, not this good. Just crazy. And I read somewhere that Liverpool, when they paid 35 million or whatever it was for Roma, they, they were worried that they overpaid. Yeah, as if. Um, but there was some bad news tonight. Um, Oxley chamberlain of course, coming from an Arsenal fan, I know him very well. Well, I know him as a footballer very well. I don't know him personally, of course, but um, I, I still love the guy. I, I don't have any... I, I don't hate him for what he did, you know, moving to Liverpool. I completely get it. I really do. He's he's turned into a better player already. He gets more game time. He's in the Champions League. He's in the semi-final right now. Arsenal aren't, OK? So you could argue he made the right decision. Didn't look like it at the start, though, did it? But he came off injured. He kind of fell awkwardly. Um, turns out it didn't affect Liverpool too much. But basically, I just want to say, look, Oxlade-Chamberlain, obviously the World Cup's coming up and it would be an absolute travesty if he couldn't go. So hopefully he recovers quickly. It, it, it doesn't look good though, does it? So with the result being 5-2, what are the odds of Roma making a comeback in the next game? Well, first of all, they will score. They will score. 100% they will score against Liverpool at home. The question is, will Liverpool... Go to Rome and say, right, OK, we've got a three-goal lead. Technically, it's not a three-goal lead because of the away goals rule, but you know what I mean. Do they set up defensively and say, hit them on the break? Is, is that what they do? Or do they just, just go for it and try and get... I mean, if they score one away goal against Roma, that, that's it. it. It is game over, surely. So that's what I would do. If I, if I was Klopp... And I was, you know, doing the team talk before the match against Roma and doing the lineup. I would 100% pre 
pretty much go with what he did tonight and get at them nice and early on and get that early goal. They could easily concede one in the first half and then you can imagine how nervous the fans are going to be. The players are going to be really worried that they're going to potentially be undone even though they were 5-0 up. So I think it would be very silly of them to turn up and just play defensively and just grind out a 0-0. You know, that, that for me would be the wrong decision. But I'm no manager. Maybe Klopp thinks that that's the right way to do it. I very much doubt it. He's a very clever guy, really intelligent coach, and he will know exactly what they need to do against Roma to, to make sure that the 5-2 is enough, um, which it probably is. I think the odds of Roma making a comeback are pretty, pretty low, but because they've done it already this season against Barcelona, arguably the best team in the world up there for sure, they can do it against Liverpool, who, you know, you guys won't mind me saying, you're not Liverpool, uh, you're not Barcelona by any means you're not freaking bad let's be honest I think Liverpool right now are the best team in England I mean Man City have won the Premier League but their form is, isn't even close to Liverpool's form right now unbelievable their front three I mean Mane missed some absolute sitters today it could have been more those three with Firmino in the middle it's just Salah Firmino and Mane unbelievable and to think they lost Coutinho you don't even you don't even see that having an effect at all it's just, it's mind-blowing. Um, one thing I also wanted to say, um, I saw a lot of tweets, people saying that um, that Liverpool are just, you know, they're that good that they can blow any team away. And I also saw some tweets, people just saying, it's just Roma, wait till they play Madrid in the final. Which, by the way, isn't even, it's not even, we're not there yet, okay? So it's a bit early to be saying that. But let's say that they're right. They get into the final against Madrid and Madrid just destroy them. They've got more experience, better squad they do I'm afraid to say it but they do um and it is, it's likely that it is gonna be Madrid in the final but it might not be I just despise those kind of tweets and those kind of messages that people put out saying that oh it's only it's only Roma do people not remember literally just a couple of weeks ago not even a couple of weeks recently they did they they oh it, it just blows my mind how people can be so stupid and ignorant on social media after football. I know I've made my own mistakes and my predictions can be way off sometimes, but you don't say things like, ah, it's only Roma, Liverpool aren't that good, when quite literally Roma destroyed Barcelona at home, overturned a massive lead and knocked them out. It really winds me up. So I wouldn't take any notice of stuff like that. Liverpool are an unbelievable team, but so are Roma. They are there for a reason and I hate it when people try and take the piss a little bit. I personally think that it's going to be too much for Roma, but it wouldn't surprise me if we see maybe a 3-1, something like that to Roma. I think they'll win the game the game at home, but who knows? It really depends how, how Liverpool show up. I don't know what else to say, really. I could just go on and on about how good Liverpool play. I mean, it's it's beautiful to watch. And there's a, there's a couple of names that really stood out tonight for me that don't usually get as much credit as they should. Lovren was really good tonight and it's it's a bit unfair to say this um, because he's he's obviously not had the best career um, at Liverpool since moving from Southampton he looked unbelievable at Southampton funny that another Southampton player that's ended up at Liverpool but when he's been partnered up with Van Dijk those two seem to be hitting it off don't they they, they seem to have a really good partnership going there um, so I wanted to give some credit to Lovren because I think it's a little bit unfair on, on him over the last few seasons, a lot of criticism has gone straight to him pretty much, when I think it's been an overall defensive issue at Liverpool. But he has improved, there's no doubt in my mind. But one guy that just continues to impress me so much, he's going to be worth so much money very, very soon, and that is Arnold, Alexander Arnold. Arnold. He's just, for his age, playing in a semi-final of the Champions League to be that composed at that age, with such little experience, he is the real deal. I'm convinced that, you know, Luke Shaw back at Southampton, big money move to Man United, hasn't worked out. I'm I'm 100% sure this is going to be the opposite. He will become an absolute great if he continues to play at Liverpool. I, I really hope he doesn't move because he's gonna he's gonna have a position for life there if he continues this great form he's in. So young, and the fact that he could be, let's say, 23 in a couple of years' time, and he's already got 50 games in the in the Champions League under his belt. I mean, can you imagine how good he'll be? Just absolutely unbelievable. I just cannot believe someone so young can be so great. And he's English. 
which is just brilliant. It's not like we're lacking right backs, though. I feel like that's one position we're kind of sorted in at the moment with, with Walker, of course, Trippier. But um, wouldn't surprise me if at some point he's just that good that you, you can't not put him in the lineup. So Liverpool are very lucky to have someone as good as him and so young as him in the lineup because Klein, I don't know why he just hasn't really hit it off for a while. I know he's been injured and stuff like that, but honestly, I'd put in, I'd put in Arnold over him. I really would. I'm just so impressed with him. Um, who else did I want to mention? Milner. Yeah, I, I think Milner gets... Um, he doesn't really get much of the credit he deserves because he's he's not a very... He's not a sexy footballer, is he? He's not. He doesn't do all the f fancy flicks. He's not He's not particularly good to watch. He's just a hard-working midfielder that just gets stuff done. And once again, was just... he was He was the daddy of the team, wasn't he? I hate that term, but it's true. He's like... I know Henderson's captain, but he isn't really, is he? It's all about Milner. He is just so good. And I know when he was brought in at Liverpool, he was to replace Steven Gerrard. And I know you're never, ever going to replace Steven Gerrard. But what he does for, for Liverpool is very similar to what Gerrard did. I think he just, he, he just instigates everything from midfield. And he's, such, he's got such good work rates, isn't he? He's up and down the pitch. He's making tackles. He's taking free kicks. He's finding those passes and scoring goals. He's just such a great, versatile player. And I'm sure Liverpool are very sad to see that he is, you know, 31 soon, I think, or maybe even 32 soon. It's a bit of a shame that he's getting on a bit because he he's he's that kind of player that ties everything together. So really impressed with him. Um, but quickly, a word on Roma, who I think did very well to get two goals in this game. Could have easily lost this one 5-0, 6-0, 7-0. Um, a couple of players really didn't didn't stand out tonight, didn't turn up at all. I thought their defence was pretty shocking. Why is Fazio playing on the right side and Manolas in the middle? If I was their manager, I'd swap those guys around. It seemed like Manolas, he's got more pace. He's, he's able to cover that right side a little bit better. Whereas Fazio is just better in the air. Sit him in the middle. That doesn't make sense to me. But one player did do well for me, and that is Dzeko. Um, X-Man City, I think... He's obviously got experience playing in England, playing against, against English sides, so that's definitely going to help him. But he was their, their one main danger player tonight who looked like he was going to score a few more. So I'm pretty sure he will he will score again in the next leg. That's just my opinion. But in general, guys, what a game. Absolutely unbelievable. I'm sure Liverpool fans are absolutely over the moon somewhat. 5-0 would have been a lot better. There is a lifeline there for Roma, but will they take it? Will they be able to take advantage of those two away goals? We will soon find out. But thank you for watching, guys. Make sure you drop a like on this video. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell. And I will see you next time.